Right, so this is one of, I think, three, I may do the other two yet, so, but I think three, uh, one of three videos which is going to look at benzene or aromatic chemistry. Um, let's put it in three, so each one's hopefully a little bit shorter. Uh, but anyway, so aromatic chemistries. Uh, the first thing really is to think about what that term means. Aromatic generally, um, and I'm going to correct myself in a second, but aromatic generally refers to a ring structure. So um, the classic one really is something like a benzene, which looks a little bit like this. And I'll come and explain what all this means in a moment. But generally speaking, what you've got is you've got a hexagonal ring. Uh, it's a skeletal formula. Um, and this is the case of benzene. Uh, a skeletal formula where each corner is representing a carbon with, in this case, one hydrogen uh, as a benzene. So benzene is C6H6. Now, it is the classic aromatic compound, um, this ring structure. That doesn't mean, though, that everything that is a ring structure is classed as aromatic. Um, cyclohexane, for example, as far as I'm aware, isn't classed as aromatic. Now, that creates some confusion. Um, but really, aromatics, as far as I'm aware, that is, I'm, certain, I'm sure someone will correct me, um, benzene is really your, your main aromatic, not the only one, but your main aromatic compound and derivatives of benzene, um, different forms of benzene. Um, the other type, just, just to compare, really, is something called aliphatic. So aliphatic would be your standard kind of just a skeletal formula, so like a chain, you know, that's your classic kind of your linear fl uh, format, that's aliphatic. Um, ala, I spell that for you, it's, it's a great word aliphatic as opposed to aromatic which is referring to this guy here which is benzene C686 note that, that has got a slightly odd uh, normally with the say something like cyclohexane it would be C6H12 this isn't it's C6H6 so one carbon at each corner attached to one hydrogen I'll come on to how that's the case in just a second okay now I've drawn this straight out of the structure, which is actually how benzene is. I thought about how to do this best, and this was the only way I could think of doing it, was just to give you that straight away. Um, now, a lot of the exam questions, when you talk about particularly the structure of benzene, which is what this video is looking at, it's just benzene, really, and not its reactions, but just its structure, is essentially, you could get asked questions as to kind of what this looks like. You know, if you were to draw this out, for example, you might say, right, well, the only way you can get that to look at exactly C6H6 would be to maybe have a carbon there, the carbon, 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 and carbon there, and you might go, right, well, if I'm going to undo that, put it here, uh, we could put a double bond there, double bond there, double bond there, and looking at each carbon currently having three bonds, that you could then put your hydrogens in, in to make you C6H6. And this is classed as a Kekulé structure a bit of french there it's a I assume he's french it might not be uh, i think he's french probably french uh, this is a kekulé structure uh, and it's essentially cyclohexa 135 triene so it's cyclohexene but with three double bonds within it so triene now you're not a million miles off if you were to think that this is the case as kekulé did that this is the structure of benzene obviously not skeletalizing it this is the structure however if you were to look at benzene, you sort of like x-ray crystallography or some sort of analysis technique, I'm pretty sure that's what they use to look at it. When you look at the actual size of these bonds, so the carbon-carbon double bonds and the carbon-carbon single bonds, the issue is that you actually find that all bonds within benzene, all bonds are the same length. So that's, you might think, not, not a massive problem. However, if it were to have this Kekulé structure, they wouldn't be the same length. Uh, and what you actually find is that you end up with an intermediate bond length, which is slightly bigger than a double bond, but less than a single bond. So you've got this intermediate uh, kind of bond length. Now that means, with that alone, that benzene cannot have the structure given by Kekulé, this what's often classed as sort of a hypothetical structure, this cyclohexa 135 triene. So it can't have that structure based on the fact that the bond lengths just don't work. It has this intermediate, it's something like 139 or 140 nanometers or picometers, I can't remember the exact unit they use, but essentially it has an in-between length of a double and a single bond as per this crystallography that can be used, an analysis technique. So that's one proof that Kekulé probably wasn't 
wasn't that right. But the ex the one that's going to come up in the exams more, and I've got a couple of exam questions afterwards, is looking at how reactions can prove that this isn't the case. And what you can use is you can use the idea of hydrogenation. Now, if this was the correct form here, you could hydrogenate it, and you could essentially hydrogenate it three times. You could add hydrogen there, you could add hydrogen there, and you could add hydrogen there. So you could basically add three hydrogen molecules into it, and that's class as obviously hydrogenation of the entire molecule. And in exams, they quite like to tell you that one hydrogenation has an nth change overall of minus 120 kilojoules per mole, and that's to that would be to hydrogenate one of these double bonds. So that's minus 120 kilojoules per mole. So it's an exothermic process minus 120 kilojoules of energy would be released if you were to hydrogenate to just one of these other bonds. So therefore, you could say, right, well, if I've got three, i.e., you know, the, the triene there, you could s assume that the enthalpy change overall would be three times minus 120. And so, without even a calculator, my maths is so good, you could what you would assume, you could say that if I was to fully hydrogenate benzene, if it had the Kekulé structure, which we've already said it doesn't, but if it did, it would have overall, you would expect, by hydrogenating it fully, the three double bonds, an enthalpy change of minus 360 kilojoules per mole. It doesn't, though. So benzene, this is this is what you would get if you use the cyclohexatriene. Benzene, if you can hear the wind, it's so windy. The benzene gives you a value of, a delta H value of minus 208 kilojoules per mole, which clearly that's a different value. 360 is not the same as 208, so I'm hoping you can, you can, you know, you can see the difference between those numbers. And in fact, the difference is 152, um, not a particularly magical number, but in an exam, you are often expected to be able to calculate that, which I'm hoping you could probably work that out, uh, the difference between Use a calculator if you must, but the difference is 152 kilojoules per mole between one and the other. Now, I, I find people often get confused about this, and they, and they don't really interpret and understand the next part. So I think it's important to go back and really focus around the idea of what enthalpy changes are and how they work in particular in relation to exothermic and endothermic reactions. So... Just to break it down, in an exothermic reaction, i.e. a negative enthalpy change versus an endothermic, which would be a positive enthalpy change, in an exothermic reaction, you find that the bond-making part is greater than the bond-breaking and in an endo you have the exact opposite so bond breaking it's bigger than bond making and the reason for that is that when bonds are made this is a bit of revision really back to sort of energetics in in the year one content or year two depending on when you actually cover it when bonds are made energy is released so you could say that bond making this is this is the weird concept bond making is an exothermic process whereas when bonds are broken energy is taken in. So bond breaking is an endothermic process. Energy is required. Now to go back, provided you make sure you're really happy with that idea, if you go back to this bit here, and just to, just to say, the difference between the bond making and the breaking is what determines really whether you've got an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. If you have more energy released when the bonds are made than is taken in when bonds are broken, it will be exothermic and vice versa. So if we were to go back to this to this idea of what we've got up here, now no matter whether we are, if we're comparing directly the cyclohexa 135 tri and this hypothetical Kekulé structure versus the real structure of benzene, if we were to compare those two, we could say that regardless, this you do add three hydrogen molecules to it as well. So we've got this minus 360 versus minus 208. Regardless of which one you're using, you're adding three hydrogen molecules and you're ultimately forming regardless of which one we're going to move over here, yes I am, you are going to be forming three carbon-hydrogen bonds. 
Now that means that this bond making portion for both of these reactions, either the cyclohexa 135 triene or the benzene, the bond making portion is remaining constant. Therefore, the same energy will be released because of that. However, these clearly have different values. This here, the benzene uh, enthalpy change, the enthalpy of hydrogenation with the three hydrogen molecules, that has a that has a more positive value. And that tells me that obviously less energy is being given out, which means if the bond making portion, the energy releasing portion, is the same for both, that means the bond breaking portion for benzene must be greater. So more energy is taken in, in that bond breaking uh, portion which means by definition therefore you could say that benzene is more stable so therefore and this is the key part this is really proving this so not only are we proving that this is not uh, the case there we are proving that benzene is obviously more stable than the two uh, so benzene more stable and the reason for that is again just to sort of make the point there between these two the reason is that benzene the energy released within the bond making portion of making the carbon hydrogen bonds is the same however more energy must be taken in to get this minus 208 value therefore we can say that benzene is more stable and in general terms you can say that benzene is stable and that brings me on to the last part of this video before some questions and that is in relation to its structure now benzene I'll move right down here benzene has this drawn off as this skeletal form here with this circle in the middle. Now that circle in the middle is crucial. Without the circle you've just drawn cyclohexane. With the circle you've drawn benzene and those are very very different molecules. And this circle in the middle is directly, what well, it's telling us, it's showing us that there is a ring of delocalized, I should really say ring, of delocalized electrons. Now I'm not going to go into a huge huge amount of detail, there's a great, and I'll put a link somewhere, there's a great uh, chem guide page where he goes into a little bit more detail about particularly the, the orbitals uh, and the idea of the subshells and how you actually end up with these delocalized electrons, but long and short of it is each carbon here, if, I, if you take this corner over here, this corner is relating to carbon, carbon and hydrogen. Well that carbon basically has the ability to make four bonds whereas it doesn't it only makes three bonds and that means it has this spare electron and it's that spare electron which ultimately becomes delocalized and what happens is because that is true of this carbon this carbon this carbon this carbon this carbon and this carbon so all six carbons we end up with this delocalized region and what happens is they ultimately merge and we end up with this delocalized ring now if you were to draw this in a I'll try and do this in a three-dimensional format that's terrible you would actually have a ring above and there'd be a ring below as well so on the side if this is benzene here benzene has a planar structure you actually have this ring delocalized ring above and delocalized ring below and when I say you have these rings it's that's this kind of almost these orbitals basically where the electrons, the delocalized electrons can occupy and that's where it starts to become a bit more confusing so I'll leave that to Mr. Chem Guy to do but the long and short of it is we have a delocalized ring of electrons within benzene and that is what is shown by this circle, this ring in the center of the of the what would be a skeletal representation of cyclohexane but that's important that you draw exactly as that, obviously it's it's probably going to look a bit wonky in an exam because it's quite hard to draw the hexagon perfectly and keep that circle uh, right in the centre. Uh, but that generally anyway, that's pretty much the structure of benzene, the fact that it's, you know, it has this uh, skeletal idea with the circle in the middle which is the local electrons and a bit about the proof there as to why it wouldn't be the Kekulé structure versus why it is this uh, this delocalized format. Um, I found two questions uh, which should hopefully appear on the screen now. Okay, this is the first question, and I can't remember what year this is from. It's from June 15, it's question 8, so it's towards the end of the paper. This is from an old Chem 4 paper, 
which is obviously the old well I say obviously this was this was the old paper which included the aromatic chemistry um, so this is a question exactly you can see now that sort of the similarities what I've shown you so you've got the bottom here is is benzene our classic our good friend there three hydrogens and an overall enthalpy change of minus 208 and that's the the hydrogenation enthalpies and then you're given just the cyclohexene just the with the one uh, double bond and you're given the enthalpy change for one hydrogen being uh, one hydrogen molecule being added now the first thing here is we have to appreciate that the the Kekulé structure has three uh, double bonds there so you would have to it's the idea we have might three times minus 120 so it'd be might minus 360 in order to compare these like for like because at the minute we can't really compare these because the Kekulé structure the cyclohexatriene um, has three double bonds so we have to multiply that up now Looking back at this question here, this or this this first question, use this use these data to show that benzene is 152 kilojoules per mole more stable than the hypothetical compound cyclohexa 135 triene. Well, that's my first step there. I would say, all right, well, three times minus 120 is minus 360, and basically the difference between the two of them I think that's right. Minus 360, minus minus 208 is like a plus. Yeah, minus 152. So basically, it doesn't matter here whether you get a positive or a negative value. Really, the point is you're trying to prove that the you got you well. Basically, they're looking for you to be able to get to this 360 by multiplying that that 120 by three, and then looking at the difference between those two values to get the minus uh, the 152 different. Um, why benzene? Why is it more stable? Well, exactly as I said towards the end of the sort of the theoretical part, it's more stable because it has the delocalized electrons. Oh no, it's gone. Where's my? Where's my? There it is. It's, it's not coming up again. I hate when it does this. There you go. Delocalized electrons. One mark. So two reasonably. Uh, we're going to leave that one for now. Um, two reasonably straightforward marks there. Um, the second question here was from 2011, so quite a few years ago now. Um, this one gives you a little bit less guidance. Uh, it's just worth four marks as opposed to the, each one being worth two there, uh, one there. Um, but there are a lot more marks to achieve. Now the question is saying yada 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 yada, hi, well, Ben just like blah 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 blah. This is the bit we really want here because this is going to go on and look at some of the mechanisms that are involved. So it's cyclohexatriene does not exist in described hypothetical. Use the following data to state and explain the stability of benzene compared with the hypothetical cyclohexatriene. So it's exactly the same as the last one. We're looking at making the point here that cyclohexatriene, we would have to do a 3 times minus 120 is uh, minus 360. We're then going to look for the difference between the two, so minus 360 minus minus 208 is minus 152. So that's the idea here of me sort of showing what's going on there. And you've also obviously got to remember to throw into that the fact that whilst I'm using the data here to state and explain, I need to actually state how the how benzene, how stable benzene is compared with this hypothetical molecule. So you would have to throw into this benzene is more stable and as per the question it's asking to explain that. So we're stating, we're using the data, we've stated that it's that it's more stable and we've used the data to sort of confirm that. But that's not really explained. So benzene is more stable because, and that's an important word in explaining questions, it has delocalized ring of electrons and there you go so there's a four mark question there. there's all four marks are going to be uh, there you've got two marks this first but one for the first calculation two for the second one is for the, the difference between them and then the statement and the explanation hopefully that's been reasonably uh, useful um, do get hold of me on Twitter if you're unsure about anything um, do have a look at the new website because it's incredible, Um But yeah, hopefully that's been of some use. Uh, and there you go.